talk about is Charles. Charles, Charles is the relationship between volume and temperature. It's the relationship of volume and temperature. Obviously, moles is going to be constant. What else is constant now? Pressure. So let's come back to our combined gas law. V1, V1, T2 is equal to T2, V2, T1. Same thing. Because pressure is constant, we can say that P1 is equal to P2. So let's sub in P1 for P2 now. P1, V1, T2 is equal to P1, V2, T1. P1 and P1 cancel with each other. Okay? This then gives us Charles' law. Charles' law looks like this. V1, T2 is equal to V2, T1. Or... You can have it like this as well. V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. I will be using this one in class. Feel free to use either formula, but I want you to select one and stick with it. Do not go back and forth. Let's do this example. Example one says, a sample of helium gas has a volume of 445 liters at 30 degrees Celsius. To what temperature must helium be heated to to increase the volume to 500 liters? All right, let's set it up. V1, T1, V2, T2. Plug those numbers in. V1 is 445 liters. T1 is 30 degrees Celsius. V2 is... 500 and T2 is unknown. Okay, so let's do some conversions. Temperature must always be in Kelvin. If it was in Kelvin in the combined gas law, temperature will also be in Kelvin in all of the other gas laws. Always Kelvin. So we need to add 273.15. This is our magic number. Oh, yes. 303.15 Kelvin. Good. Okay. Let's now use our formula and isolate for our variable. Our formula is V1T2 is equal to V2T1. We are isolating for this guy here. So I divide by V1 on both sides. V1 cancels out with V1, which gives me T2. I'm going to scroll down slightly. It's going to give me T2 is equal to V2 T1 over V1. From here, we plug in our numbers. Please be careful when you are plugging in numbers. It says V2, so I grab 500. Liters multiplied by T1, which is 303.15 Kelvin, divided by V1, which is 445 liters. Liters cancels out, and I'm left with units of Kelvin. This makes sense because we are looking for temperature. Okay, once I plug that in, I get an answer of 341 Kelvin. I do not need to convert it to degrees Celsius unless asked to. Okay, if you are not asked, don't need to take a risk by getting it wrong. So my final answer is 341. If you were to give me an answer in degrees Celsius, 67.5 degrees Celsius. 
We report to three significant digits because that is the lowest number that we saw in the, pro in the problem. All right. Let's ask ourselves some follow-up questions. What happened to volume? Did it increase or decrease? Volume increased. Our new temperature is about 67.5 degrees Celsius. What happened to temperature? Temperature also increased. Okay, let's go and explore the relationship here. If volume is increased, what will happen to temperature? It will also increase. What is the relationship between volume and temperature at constant pressure and moles? Draw a graphical representation. Okay, let's, let's look at this. So let's say I increase temperature. Therefore, Volume should also increase, okay? So let's say I have a container, okay, that's held under constant pressure, and it has four moles of gas. The flame is very slow. Oh, God. That's a flame. Heat. Heat. It's very tiny, very tiny, very tiny. It's a, it's a candle. Okay, then I take this container. So right now the container is about this big, and the volume of gas is about there. Okay, same type of container, and I move it to more flames. Let's move it to an actual fire. Okay, green toxic fire. Okay, what happens to particles when I heat them up? They move faster, they move farther away from each other. So those same four molecules are now going to be much farther away from each other. So the volume that they occupy is much bigger. Therefore, the relationship between volume and temperature is proportional. So, volume and temp at constant moles and pressure is proportional. P -O. Proportional. Therefore, if one increases, the other will increase. If one decreases, the other will decrease as well. Okay, again, this fish-like symbol means proportional. this relationship graphically, okay? So there's a couple scenarios. We have volume and temperature. Capital T, capital T. If volume increases, or sorry, if temperature increases, what happens to volume? Increases. If temperature decreases, what happens to volume? Decreases. Okay? Volume, temperature. If volume increases, what happens to temperature? If volume increases, what happens to temperature? Increases. Last scenario. If volume decreases, what happens to temperature? Decreases. Proportional relationship. Next example, a balloon is filled with hydrogen gas. That's pretty fun. Hydrogen gas blows up. It is at a temperature of 325 degrees Kelvin and has a volume of 14 liters. The balloon is cooled, causing the volume to decrease to 9 liters. 
What is the temperature in degrees Celsius? It's very, it's being very specific. I want your answer in degrees Celsius. So as I'm doing this, you guys go through it and do the problem on your own, and then you can compare your answer. First step is to list your variables. Okay, a balloon scale 14. 325 Kelvin, 9 liters, and we're looking for temperature. Okay, should I be converting T1 into degrees Celsius? Should I convert this into degrees Celsius, this slide right here? Can I put degrees Celsius into the formula? No, so do not convert it. Do not convert it. Okay, the relationship between volume and temperature is based on the temperature being in Kelvin. So now, let's isolate. So we're looking for V2. That's going to give me P1 T2 over... Oh, wait, we're not looking for V2. Hold on, hold on. We're looking for T2, which is going to give me V2 T1 over V1. Subbing those values in, 14 liters. Oh, wait, not 14 liters. See, I do it too. It's V2. 9 liters. Multiplied by T1, 325 Kelvin, divided by 14 liters. Liters cancels out, and I'm left with Kelvin. That's fine. Kelvin can get us back to degrees Celsius. But when you are using the formula, you will only put Kelvin into the formula. Once you plug that in, you get a temperature of 208.92 Kelvin. Okay, that's fine. We can now convert this by subtracting 273.15. Oh, and it's going to give me an answer of negative 64.2 degrees Celsius. This is okay. Okay? You are allowed to have negative temperature. You get negative 64. <laughs> I have a question for you now. Question is the question is is temperature proportional? Is temp proportional? to volume in units of Kelvin or Celsius, or both. What do you guys think? Take a minute, talk with each other. What I want us to keep in mind is yes, if you decrease the temperature in Celsius, I'm uh, sorry, if you decrease it in Kelvin, in Celsius, you will still see it be proportional. You only see this relationship if you do the calculation in Kelvin. You will not see this relationship if you do it in degrees Celsius. Okay, so for volume to be directly proportional, temperature must be in Kelvin. That's okay. Okay, I want you to try the U try on your own. Give you about five minutes, and then we'll take it up. We have a three liter sample of oxygen gas held at SATP. 
The volume increases to 5 liters. What do we expect to happen to the temperature? Increase or decrease? Increase. So our volume increase, because the relationship is proportional, our temperature should also increase. What is the new temperature of the gas? So once I have laid everything out and subbed within the formula, our liters cancel each other out. You should get a temperature in Kelvin of 497. Okay, because it doesn't specify what units you have to use, that is good enough. You do not need to take the risk of subtracting. If you did go one step further, you could have gotten an answer of 224 degrees Celsius. 